Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. Now that we're regularly shipping kits, more on that at the end of the video, we've been looking into some optimizations and improvements for the machine to make it more reliable to source and add some cool features. If you already have a kit, don't worry. Any of these features are things that you can already implement because of the hardware you have or they're really easy to add on. A few of these changes have to do with using PCBs in super weird ways, and I love using PCBs in weird ways. So the first one, which you might have seen before, is this board. This is the datum board. We call it the datum board because it is the reference point for the machine in like seven different ways. The first way that it's a reference is on the back side of the board, there is the calibration pattern that OpenPMP looks for to eliminate fisheye. So when you first set up your machine, you can actually use the pattern on the PCB to calibrate out the fisheye in both of your cameras. Pretty sweet. Then the front has a bunch of stuff going on. The main thing on the front is the homing fiducial, and this is what everyone can use on their Lumen PMP kit right now. It is the fiducial in the center of the little Opula logo, and this is effectively a finer resolution way to home the machine other than just limit switches. Limit switches can get you pretty close to knowing home a zero zero position of your machine, but they have plus or minus 100, 200 micron accuracy, which is a non-starter for a machine that needs to place super tiny components. So what we do is we home using limit switches and then we move to this fiducial and then we actually truly set exact home based on the position of this dot. That means that once this is affixed to your staging plate, it can't move because it is the reference for every other position that you set on the machine. We actually have another six fiducials spread out around the board and this is for down the road being able to do a millimeter to pixel conversion automatically in OpenPMP. Right now you need to look at something with the camera that you know is a certain number of millimeters, let's say five millimeters. And then OpenPMP will measure how many pixels that is and it'll calculate the pixels per millimeter. This works okay, but it's not automatic and it's a little finicky and it doesn't quite work perfectly every time. So we'd love to add some kind of functionality down the road where it can just scan these fiducials and it knows the exact spacing of them and it can just automatically calibrate your pixels per millimeter for you just by looking at this board. In the meantime though, we have added a little ruler on the bottom and the grid that's around the homing fiducial is a grid of five millimeter squares. So you can still use the OpenPMP wizard using this board in the meantime. Then there's these two dots on either side of the board. One dot is a gold plated pad and then the other one is just white solder mask. First of all, it is a reference point for machine vision exposure calibration. If we know what a matte black solder mask, a white silk screen, and a gold plated pad look like in the camera, we can do a pretty good job of automatically calibrating all of the exposure settings right out of the gate. So the camera can just go over, look at this board, it knows exactly where the white silk screen, the black solder mask, and the gold plated circle are, and it can automatically figure out what exposure settings in order to get them to look white, black, or medium. Also stuff we're working on implementing down the road, but we wanted to ship it in this hardware so when we ultimately figure out how to make that happen, everyone has the hardware to do it. And then the last thing, which we're super excited about, are these gold plated edges on the inside of the board. This was a little tricky to convince the board shop to do, but it wasn't that bad. What these will enable us to do is automatic nozzle tip to top camera offset calibration. In OpenPMP, you need to set the position of the nozzle offset from where the top camera is. You need this because when you put your camera over a position on your board, you need to know that when you say, hey, move the nozzle there, it will offset by that perfect amount to put the nozzle right where the camera was just a minute ago. If that's offset, all of your placements will be shifted just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these gold plated pads to probe this board using the nozzle tip. We know exactly where the homing fiducial is and these two gold plated lines are perfectly in line with the homing fiducial. What we can do is take the nozzle tip and touch off all around all rotations, so we're taking run out into consideration, along these two gold plated pads, and then knowing that they're perfectly in line with the homing fiducial, reference those touch off points with the top camera to the homing fiducial. And that perfectly ties together the nozzle tip position, including run out, to the top camera. All that calibration can just happen automatically, no need to get putty or flour or anything else. It could just run it before every single job as a default. And last but not least, the gold plated circle is also a Z probe position. It's a touch off point for seeing exactly where the datum board is and really finely calibrating your Z position. This board has a lot going on in it and it enables us to do a whole bunch of stuff in software down the road, which leads me to our second weird board, which is this. This is a PCB. <laughs> Yup, this is a PCB staging plate. I'm sure a lot of you are asking, why the heck would you make this out of a PCB? There's no way this thing is inexpensive. And you're right at quantity 10. 
but at quantity 100, at quantity 500, this thing is less expensive than getting the staging plate made in steel. Now, I'm not the first person to come up with this idea. I'm not the first person to even do this. A viewer, like maybe a year ago, actually sent me something really similar to this, except it's made out of an aluminum PCB. This is really cool, but unfortunately, the aluminum bows a lot more than we'd like. There's a whole bunch of positions on here for a feeder to be able to slot in. I think that was their idea of turning this into a PCB is running traces through it too, which is a super cool idea. But the aluminum just doesn't have the rigidity that we need at this thickness to actually have it be useful. FR4 at three millimeters though is really good. I can really flex it and it's really not moving at all. It is a little bit more flexy than the steel staging plate, but that's why we have the foot 3D print, which is supposed to go underneath the bottom camera and it just breaks up this big bridge into two much smaller ones and there is no flex with that thing. We added a couple really cool features to this thing that's gonna make a lot about the machine a ton easier too. We actually don't have the cutout for the bottom camera removed by default. It's in there with mouse bites. What this means is you can get this thing and use it as a build plate, just another plate that goes on your machine for more build area, adding more feeders or supporting a bigger board. Or you can just punch this thing out with some flush snips. So this one PCB can dual act as more build area or your original staging plate where your motherboard and your pump are mounted. And last but not least, and I'm really excited about this one, every single one of these holes is grounded. They're all electrically connected. The datum board also is all grounded together. This touch probe and the probes for automatic nozzle offset calibration, those are all connected to these plated holes. And when this bolts on here, all of that ground is all connected together. The motherboard also mounts to the bottom side and its ground is connected together. So we're actually connecting the datum board to the motherboard electrically through the staging plate. So we don't need to actually run a separate wire to the datum board in order to do our probing. Isn't that sick? It's just running it through the staging plate like it's a big wire. It's so freaking cool. And we just get it for free because this is a PCB. Our current panel mounts for the machine use magnets to hold it onto the staging plate. But I found that these magnet mounts move around a little bit too easily and we want a rigid mounting system that makes it a little bit more reliable to keep a board in the same place. OpenPMP expects that the board's gonna be pretty close to the same place every time when it's trying to hunt for the fiducials. And with the magnets, if stuff shifts around, it has a hard time finding it and you kind of have to shift it and tweak it and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I designed some rigid board mounts that will work super well on a PCB staging plate. And they use almost no plastic and they're really simple to use. <laughs> Not too shabby. So there's a couple things going on here. The first and arguably the most obvious is the fact that there is a built-in printed flexure here. I spent a ton of time trying to tune all of the different ways that I could make a flexure so that it bent a good amount that we could get a board in and out, but it also wouldn't plastically deform the plastic and it would reliably put enough force on the board that it would hold it in place. I'm really happy with where this design ended up and there's even a little stopper on the backside so you can't deform it too far. This is the dynamic mount and then we have a static mount. This one is designed to be able to be up against a flat edge or it can also take a corner like what I'm doing here. This board's corner goes into the little divot in this print, but if you had a much bigger board, then you could just put a few of these along the edge and that's a great way to hold it too. And then when you wanna take it out, all you gotta do is press the two buttons and out it comes. <laughs> and it's in there. It's not going anywhere. It's totally fine for picking and placing. It's not shifting. It's in there really solid. And if you decide you ever wanna move it or tweak it, there are wing nuts on the backside that make it super easy to adjust and you don't need to get a wrench to grab the other side. There are hex heads inside of this print that just slide throughout the course of it. So all you need to do is adjust this where you want it and then twist on the other side and it's gonna stay right in place. I love these things. They've been working so well for me so far and I'm really excited about them. And of course, you can print a ton of these little guys and put them all across your staging and build plates and it works great. And then comes our third funky board, which is actually this green one right here. This is our FTP. FTP stands for Factory Test Placement, and this is effectively a board that checks to see if your machine is working as it should be. It is really simple. It's just a whole bunch of LEDs and resistor placements. It's got three fiducials, and it's got them in all kinds of different angles. This will check a whole bunch of different things when you're running your machine. If every single one is offset, it might be a nozzle offset calibration issue. If only certain ones at certain rotations are offset, it could be a runout problem. This board will help diagnose what thing needs to be calibrated in the machine in order to get dead on placement every time. We've designed it such that there's two white lines that perfectly hold four strips 
purpose of double-sided tape. This means that this is just a great thing to keep along with your pick and place and slap it on your staging plate and run a quick FTP. You can place a bunch of cheap parts. Each one is like less than a tenth of a penny and it will tell you a bunch about exactly what needs to happen in order to get your machine to be placing things right where they need to go. This is something that right now we are going to be using for testing machines internally, but it's probably something we're gonna roll out to kits, stuff down the road. The more stuff that we can put in place to make it easier to understand what's going on with the machine, to make calibrating it, setting it up, and running a job as easy as humanly possible, the better. This thing should be a tool and not a project. And the closer we can get it to that, the more useful it becomes. So yeah, we got a whole bunch of weird PCB stuff going on right now. We're gonna be putting a lot of this stuff into GitHub in the coming weeks. These things are all still in the works. The datum board does ship with every single kit we've ever sold. And right now it pretty much just acts as a homing fiducial. But down the road, as we add functionality to OpenPMP, it's gonna make your machine a whole lot smarter and do a whole bunch of calibrations automatically. We're still testing the PCB staging plate as it is a little bit less rigid than the steel one, but we've been doing some testing with the foot underneath it and it is rock solid with that. So still a little bit more testing to do there, but it's looking pretty good. It's only worth doing the change if there aren't any regressions. And then the FTP is something that we're using internally for testing, but also could be a really cool thing to start shipping with kits so people have a great first board to place. It's kind of like printing a Benchy on your new printer. What's the first thing you do to kind of get started and understand how it works? And it helps you calibrate things just like Benchy. It's a good check. It's a gut check to make sure that you're set to do a whole bunch of other stuff, all the cool, complicated, fun stuff that you want to place with a machine. Lots of cool stuff. PCBs are so cool and you can do so much weird stuff with them. We're using the exact same material and manufacturing process as a mechanical mounting surface, as an optical calibration platform, and as a PCB. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so freaking cool. You want an update on just like what's going on here? Cause a bunch of other stuff's been happening in Opulo. So first up, we are shipping regularly now. When we did the first batch, the early birds, we had all of those ready to go, ready to ship. We shipped them that first week right after we started selling kits. Then we were waiting, sitting on our hands, waiting for stuff to come in in the mail. Some of our boxes were held up in customs for literally a month. We ordered all of the stock for all of the new orders that came in past the early bird the day after launch day. And things that we were expecting to take two weeks to ship took like seven. Lucian has spent so much time on the phone with shipping companies. <laughs> but we finally got some really important packages in and we are resuming shipping. We've been shipping every single day for like the past couple weeks and it's awesome. We have like a real true honest to goodness assembly line going. There's people in the Discord community that are using it actively to populate boards for work, for play, for all kinds of different things. It's so cool. It's so cool. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm. <laughs>